man. God bless you. I want to welcome you here at Time of Empowerment Live. You know, here on Facebook Live, rather, right Time of Empowerment. For um, Pastor Pl Flowers. Mm, get it down, Pastor Flowers. And Pastor Ruth Flowers. We want to welcome you here. We're waiting for people to join us as we get ready to get into the program on tonight. We are, as, as, as most times, we're excited. Well, I guess all the time we are excited about the broadcast on tonight. We believe um, that God has given us something that will encourage and bless you at whatever level of relationship that you are in. Amen. We thank and praise you. How you doing, uh, Sister Taylor? How you doing, uh, uh, Trudy? Good to see Trudy, you. Trudy, hey. Yes. Hey, Tony. Tony. And thank you for joining in. We thank you. We're, again, waiting for a few more people to join in with us before we get started. That's why there was a long day. It was a long it, day. It was. Uh, long had, day. Yeah, had a lot to do. Uh, um, this thing, Pastor Flowers had to take me up to the hospital today. Nothing tragic, nothing uh, dramatic or anything. Just uh, we were in, a, in the midst of uh, doing house cleaning, cleaning on yesterday. And in the midst of doing house cleaning, uh, I was standing on a ladder, and the ladder slipped from under me. And uh, what I did about three flips in the air. And, and, no. Oh, okay. I <laughs> no. Did, I did some. Uh, well, I, I fell, and uh, kind of end up tearing my uh, cartilage and messed with my meniscus and, yes. and all that stuff. But we thank God. We give God praise because we're here. Mm -hmm. You know. Yes. And that's that's, Lord, that's the thing. We're, we're here, and my wife is going to take care of me. Uh, she's going to cook me breakfast in, in bed. I'm not going to get up. And she's going to cook me dinner and lunch in bed. And I don't have to get up. Because uh, one, of, one of the requirements was that I stay off it. So that means uh, that, you know, I can't do nothing. Is it, is it, why are you still you supposed to say yes? Yes. You going to do all that? No. Oh. <laughs> you said yes, I though. will. I will. I will do my duty. I know you will. I will do what I'm supposed I, to do. <laughs> I, know you, I know you will. Amen. Again, we, we thank God for the for the broadcast. We give God praise for it. You know, Wayne, good to see you. My grandson, Wayne Foster, good to see you, young man. Um, we just thank God for uh, for just just being God and all the things that he's doing. I want to say this too, Pastor Flowers. We had an awesome time um, on last week in the, um, mandate conference. in the Mandate Conference. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. God just, God it just blessed. It was blast. awesome. Yes, it, it was. It was awesome. The preached word and then seeing this power of God being demonstrated. Yes. and You know, it just was a blessing. It was. it was a blessing that, you know, all the churches that showed up and, you know, we were there and it, it just. It was. It, it was. It, it, it was a blessing. I was, I was just saying, I was yeah. saying it was. It was a blessing that, yes, the churches that did mm -hmm. show up and uh, how God blessed and how yes. God encouraged and how God gave. And I thank God for it. And not just. Uh, we did the preaching, but we were blessed by what God said to all of us yes. and how God just gave us instructions to in preparation yeah. and discipline and order. Not just in church order. He talked mm -hmm. about relationships. He talked about marriages. He talked about dating. He talked about everything that makes us whole in, yeah. in the body of Christ. That's right. And we just thank God for that, for that man. And it's an annual date. Yeah. At, um, at Grace and Mercy. Yes, at Grace and Mercy. Bishop Mizell. Bishop Mizell and mm -hmm. stuff. We're just, just excited about it. And we just, listen, we're not going to rush this year mm -hmm. fast enough. But we, we are excited about what he's going to do throughout this year and leading into next mm -hmm. year and stuff. So we just we just give God praise and we, we're excited about all that he's going to do, not just pass the flowers in uh, with uh, the time and power mm -hmm. part, but everything that deals with the ministry and how God is going to bless and encourage his purpose for the ministry and his yep. investment for it. Amen. I just want to say this also quickly. I want to remind you that we do have some books out there. And if you'll go on um, mm -hmm. Amazon.com, uh, put our name in it, and you can put our name in, you will see our books. Uh, out there also uh, at the end of this broadcast you will see a link that we will put up there mm -hmm. that get, uh, leads you to uh, YouTube yes. where our videos all of our videos we don't charge anything for for our videos our videos will be on YouTube if you and go there please subscribe absolutely yes yes mm -hmm. please subscribe and uh, that will give you access to all the videos that, that we uh, that we've done and again you can go on there they're free of charge we're not charging anything but uh, we do encourage you. if you do want to leave an offer in Pastor Flowers will give you a quick way to leave an offering or to sow into the ministry mm -hmm. And stuff. Uh, you can always do it through Facebook. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How, how, so, how so? Well, click on the link in the messenger mm -hmm. and uh, make a donation. We are a tax exempt organization. Mm -hmm. Make a donation. Or you can go to our PayPal page and just put, you know, put in our telephone number, 302-260-2733, and click on Donate. Amen. And that's also a tax exempt organization. Amen. All that information will be on the uh, link after we get finished Amen. with this Amen. Facebook Live. Amen. So we thank God. Again, thank God for you, you joining uh, on, on tonight. Uh, again, we're excited about uh, the broadcast. We're getting ready to get started. We're waiting for a few more to join in and, and stuff, but we want to get ready to get started 
so we can get in uh, the information that we think we don't feel that God has given us for tonight. Mm -hmm. Pastor Farrell, on, on last the last broadcast, we talked about um, how not to deal, how you know how not to deal with each other uh, uh, on the basis uh, after we've held secrets, or mm -hmm. uh, one of the things we kind of threw in, like we do things to each other, uh, and we go ask God to forgive us. And I may got two or three things mixed up with it, but how we ask God to forgive us, but we never go to them. Never go back to that person you know, but and we, ask them to forgive. You know, you know, you've had it with them, and so you go off to yourself and you yeah. realize that you were wrong, right? Or you realize that you took things in the did things in the wrong way, and you will apologize and repent to God, mm -hmm. but never apologize and repent to that person and take responsibility and take responsibility for your part of it, that you played in it. Absolutely. And we you look at that a lot, and they find a lot of people who feel like, well, I repented to God. I don't owe no man nothing. No man can judge me. No man, I don't, I don't owe, I don't have to apologize to them for this. And, but you offended them. Absolutely. You violated them. And they're the ones you have to work with too. And you know, this is not, again, and I like the way you said that because mm -hmm. what we have to understand that this is not on the basis of whether somebody's judging you or not. Mm -hmm. This is on the basis of, are you willing to leave your spouse at a position or place that you won't be able to get the maximum amount of effect exactly. in your relationship from exactly. them? Exactly. You know, exactly. we can say all we want, you know, we can, we can, get our defenses up and say, well, I don't need to go back to them. They need to understand it's a Christian themselves that they need to just forgive me. Well, how can they forgive something that you haven't given evidence that you're not going to do again exactly. or that you won't take responsibility? Exactly. For? Especially if this has been your uh, MO. Absolutely. Every time something happens or, or they say, some, say something or they do something that doesn't really, you know, fit your, your, your idea of what mm -hmm. they should say or do, mm -hmm. you explode or you blow off at them, right. you talk to them in any kind of way. Voice tone mean a lot. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, absolutely. or you respond to them and snappiness. Snappiness mean you're ready to start some arguments absolutely. and stuff. Absolutely. You know, that's a better way to to respond to one another. You know, even let's say I'm asking you for a glass of water, mm -hmm. and you look back at me, okay, mm -hmm. right, snappy. I don't want that water. And, and see, sometimes what sometimes we may do is we may try to get ourselves excused because we may say, well, at that moment something else is on my mind. Well, I was I was busy doing something else. But I can did understand. You followed that. up with apology, right? But I, I can understand. Did you explain? But I, I can understand all that. That's that's all that's true. But the, the fact is, is this: we should never get in a place My that any. Oh, okay. Okay. Amen. We should never get in a place to no matter what's happening that we disregard what we claim we feel for that right, person right, right. at that moment. I, yes, you may. Have, you know, sometimes you may feel yourself. In all honesty, yeah. you may feel yourself answering in a way that you would not answer if all of your attention was on that person. Mm -hmm. But you said this this thing too. You said just a while ago. Mm -hmm. Well, if you didn't mean it, and, if, and it's really legitimate if that you, you did didn't not mean it, it, then you should be quick to respond in an apology. Oh, you I'm sorry. Come to your point. Look, I'm Absolutely. sorry. Uh, I was thinking about something, and I didn't mean to snap off at you. I didn't mean to respond to mm -hmm. you or talk to you in that way. You know, because Absolutely. when you're snapping at people right away, that's saying something to them. Oh, good evening. Okay. Is that's that it, a, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, How you? Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, Annie Atkins. That's okay. my sister, everybody. That's my How sister. How you doing? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Um, um, you know, when, you, when, when you're saying something to somebody and, and, and you, you know, even if it catch you off guard and you snap at them, it hurts them. Absolutely. And Absolutely. when you hurt their feelings, you hurt them really, really deep. And, and both sides have to be mature in this. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, l let me consider that maybe I caught you at a moment that you weren't, that your attention wasn't on me. I, I can do that. Mm -hmm. But what I have to do is give space and time to see if you're going to take responsibility. If you're not going to take responsibility, then I have to bring it to your attention. Look, right, right. I, I, listen, I, I didn't deserve the way you responded because exactly. I didn't mean, I didn't exactly. give it to you like that. And and, then, and the other may say, if they're mature, they may say, you know what, you're right, I'm sorry, my mind is on something else and, and, um, and I shouldn't have responded like that. But it can't keep doing like that. Mm -hmm. Stress, we talk about stress mm -hmm. somewhere in the, stress or distractions or concentration on other things cannot always be a way out to talk Bills. any kind of way they want with anybody mm -hmm. else. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, it cannot always be an excuse to why we may answer. I'm not saying that we can't get stressed for the things won't happen, but you always got to pull yourself in, even if it means that I have to retract and say, you know what, I shouldn't have answered you like that. I shouldn't have responded to you like that. My mind was on something else. I can accept it, mm -hmm. but let's not, let's not practice. Let's not let this be a practice. Mm -hmm. We cannot always do this. I can't always snap at you and say, I'm sorry, but that practice, that behavior never changes. Right. Because then, I, then you start to question: Do you really mean it, or is it you're trying to say something that you wouldn't normally say? Then you use something as an excuse to say what you really feel. You know, sometimes when people get angry, they say things, and some may claim it was my anger talking. When in mm -hmm. reality, no, that was the anger made them brave enough to say it. It yeah, wasn't really what they yeah. it didn't. It wasn't that they didn't mean to do yeah. it. It was that they were brave enough in their anger to say what they wouldn't say outside of being angry. Mm -hmm. And we got to watch out that we don't uh, uh, bring our spouses to a place to think that maybe 
it's it's not a mistake. Maybe you're saying, maybe you're like that towards me, but you use your distractions, you use your frustrations to answer me in a way uh, that without those frustrations, uh, mm-hmm. you, you wouldn't have no excuse to do it, and you and you you, you know you wouldn't ask nobody else to do or say after you did it outside of claiming you're distracted or angry or frustrated. But we just have to pass. But it then you, you you got the person. Well, once you come off on them mm-hmm. and say something to them hurtful or whatever. During the time when you were angry, and you mm-hmm. you know you blame me. Oh well, I was just angry. I was going through some things. I was this. I was that. And this is why I said it. But then deep inside the other person, they're thinking, well, where did it come from? It had to come from somewhere. Well, I didn't mean it. It had to come from somewhere. Where did it come from? And I think personally that that's somewhere that really needs to be explored. Mm-hmm. Where did that come from? Now, where did that seed come from? Because it had to come from somewhere. Now, as long as they're doing it, as long as the, as long as the one who comes to this conclusion comes to the conclusion not after the first time it's done but they come to this conclusion if it's a practice something continues on but it, 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 it's not always something under underground that's that's in regard that's directed at you when somebody there's can there can be legitimate distractions there can be sometimes where people you know how you sometimes and I, I, I I'm sure I've done this where I'll be watching TV and my wife be calling me I don't hear and she be calling, calling me, and stuff. And then she hollers my name, not to be to get my attention, not to be nasty, but to get my attention. And I'm like, "Why are you hollering?" And mm-hmm. she she tells me because I called you 20 times, mm-hmm. I called you 15 times or whatever times and stuff. I said, "Oh, I didn't hear you." You know, well, yeah, sports are not always mm-hmm. sports now. Most of the Some, time, yeah, sports. Sometimes it's you know those those uh, house shows, you know, where, where no, it's not. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to get you in there. See, I got you, got you right in there. Yeah. But what, what, whatever it is and stuff. You, you gotta you, you gotta measure the timing of it. Don't just come to a conclusion that it's something that's that that's directed at you or directed against you, uh, just just because it happens one time. Find out find out why you know what it is. I mean you know you, you talk you, I I got your attention and then you seem frustrated. I got your attention. I need to know why you why you frustrated like that. See if we'll take responsibility. See if we'll answer. I'm excuse me y'all. I'm sorry. I got this got this monitor over here and it was up loud. See just see why. Um, why you're answering like that? Why? Why you? Why you? Why you seem to be angry when I get your attention? And some they say, "Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it like that. I, I was watching this, or I was doing this. My attention and mind was on this. And then when you called me, I called it at the end of it. And and, and this is legitimate. Mm-hmm. Sometimes when somebody's attention is somewhere else, mm-hmm. they catch you at the end of your of your engaging in them, mm-hmm. and they only answer to what they call at the end, mm-hmm. and they think something is missing or somebody is coming at them in the wrong way. So both need to need to need to you gather know, themselves. I, I can accept that. I can accept mm-hmm. that, but what about when one feels like they don't owe the other that explanation? That's bad. You know, I can give you a short explanation, mm-hmm. but a long explanation will not only satisfy you, but it will keep you from being damaged. Well, well let me ask you this question then. Okay. If a long explanation keeps you from being damaged, then how come you don't take the time to do the long explanation? <laughs> well, let me ask you a question. Don't just look at me and say, oh, I was just watching TV. No, 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 no. Oh, okay, hold on, hold give on, me the long explanation. There she goes. She's on, on a roll now. <laughs> look. Yeah. But let me ask you a question. Um, when do you, and you need the answer because you brought this up now. Mm-hmm. When do you need a long answer? Especially now, and now when I'm, what you told said you two scenarios. Was, was, was strong enough to possibly damage me. Okay. Even if it's even if it's just only for something like 15 minutes. Right. If it was something that could make me take a back, so mm-hmm. to speak. Mm-hmm. You know, something that would make me think, well, why he say it, talking to me like that? Why did he talk that sharp? Why did he snap at me? Did I do something? What's going on here? Then I would want you to not just give me a short, mm-hmm. okay, band-aid mm-hmm. type explanation. I want you to care enough about me to say, you know what, I was wrong, and I don't want this to take her somewhere. Mm-hmm. Why didn't mean for her to go? Right now, and that's good, and that's and that's proper. Mm-hmm. But here's here's how this next need to be balanced out. If the short explanation covers everything that they're actually dealing with at that time, to pull in more means that try to get that person to say something that's not there. Mm-hmm. So what you have to do is now. If it's where you need, it's where, where you need information because you're not understanding. Okay, you may say, "Oh, I'm sorry. I was just so distracted. I, you know, I, I, I you know, I, I just lost, I just lost, lost it for a moment and stuff." And I'm sorry. Okay, then you you can understand that if it's something again that just happened, mm-hmm. not something that continues to happen, not something that's a continuing practice, mm-hmm. but, but it just happens. But if it happens over and over again and stuff, and it keeps saying, "But you know, I'm sorry. I just, you know, I, I just lost myself. I just lost." Uh, focus. I lost time, or whatever it may be, whatever the excuse may be, that's legitimate. You can't just settle for that because you need to know what, why, why, why this happened again. Because this is not the first time. The first time you this happened, 
And when I asked you why, why'd you answer me like that, mm -hmm. you said that same thing. Now I need to know one or two things: is there more behind this, yeah, or or did you not work on it from the first time? Because mm -hmm. you know there's going to be times that you're going to be doing things, and your spouse is going to come in and they're going to ask for your attention. So you know that's going to happen. That no matter what you say, that's going to happen. It may not happen all the time, but from time to time, you're going to be doing something. Yeah. You're not going to get the opportunity to finish it. Or you're not going to get the opportunity to complete where you're at. You're going to be able to finish it, but you're not. You're, you're going to have to stop for a moment because your spouse is going to ask for some attention because it's something they want to share with you. So you know that's going to happen, and you know because it's happened more than one time that this is going to happen again. So by this time, the second or third time, it should not repeat the first thing that the, the same thing that happened the first time because you you should be ready for it because you know that's what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So now that spouse wants to know in the long term. And the long answer is, okay, you told me it was because your attention was not on me or your attention was somewhere else, something else and you were on something else. Okay, I can understand that because I saw how focused you was on the thing. Mm -hmm. I can understand that. But what made you respond to me the same way every time I come to you when you know that there's times mm -hmm. that I'll come and get your attention? Then I need a long-term answer because I don't need you just to tell me what you think I need to hear or what I want to hear. Mm -hmm. I need you to tell me how you're going to take responsibility when I ask you for legal attention why you need to respond to me as if I'm coming to you wrong yeah. or as if I have no no right. And this, the, I think this is one of the key things, Pastor Flowers, that all spouses need to understand. When you answer a spouse in a wrong way, yeah, short, because, snappy. short, snappy way, you're, you're giving that spouse a, a, a thought that maybe you feel I don't have a right yeah. to ask for your attention. Yeah. I remember one time we were, um, I was studying, we, was, we were doing a relationship teaching. And um, um, I, I Pastor Fly was getting ready to go somewhere, and I was I was in my um, we was talking about the relationship teaching, but I was studying. I was in I was in here. I was just studying and stuff. And when I study, I try to I, I really do get intense about what I'm studying about. But um, and so she was um, she was getting ready to go somewhere, mm -hmm. and I was studying. She came in. And she called me, and I didn't, I didn't hear because I was in my study. And she came in, and she called me again. And I don't know if I heard you that time or was one more time you came. That's oh okay what? And then she told me she was getting ready to go somewhere. And stuff, and she was letting me know that she was leaving. I said, okay, no, no problem. And she went on left. But we talked about this in a relationship teaching one time. And there was a pastor that was there. And stuff, and felt that she was out of line because she was trying to, you know, she was getting my attention while I was in study. And I don't know if it was because of her husband or wife or whatever. And I responded, was, no, she was not out of line because she has a right to come in and get my attention anytime she wants it. No matter what, no matter what state I'm in, no matter what I'm doing, she has a right to get, come and get my attention. No, no, there's no, there's no incident or situation that's offline for her to be able to come and get my attention. There's sometimes if I'm not careful, I may respond in a way that I would not respond. That's why I have to be careful to understand the difference between I got someone else in the house that I'm married to, and she at times is going to come in and ask for my attention when I'm in the middle of something. So I got to have that in consideration, and while keeping focus on the study that I'm having, it's not a problem with doing that. It's not a problem. When someone comes in, that's legitimate. When someone comes in that you have a covenant with, when someone comes in that you love, you should never be offended when they come in and ask for some time. Mm -hmm. That really belongs to them anyway. And they're not going to violate. They're not no, going to take no, a whole lot of time because they know what you're doing. But Absolutely. on that particular day, you know, whenever we leave the house, if it's Absolutely. just, most of time we leave the house together. Mm -hmm. But if it's just one of us leave the house to go somewhere, whether it's to the store or to the, you know, post office or wherever, we always, always tell Knock on, I'm getting ready to leave the house. Absolutely. Letting you know that I'm no longer in the house. Did you want anything? Do you want Absolutely. me to bring you anything? We always do that. So that's the way that we do things Absolutely. in our house. And I want her I want her to tell me to when she leaves. <laughs> no, but guess what could happen? <laughs> if you didn't tell me you were leaving, right? Mm -hmm. And we do that out of respect. It's not yes, a demand, not we do it out of respect. respect. It's easy to, it's, when you have that kind of respect with one another, it's easy to feel like this is something I like doing. This is something I want to do. And then having to say, well, I need to, I need to keep tabs on you. Mm -hmm. It's not where it's tabs mm -hmm. on you. It's where if you're out of the house, I want to know. So if you're out of the house and it looks like time is not where it needs to be for you to get home, and I'm not measuring, I just need to know, okay, do I, do I need to be concerned? Right. Is everything all right mm -hmm. and stuff? And so I'll check my phone or I'll give her a call and find everything's all right. If everything's all right, I'm fine. So it's a mutual, mutual respect. Exactly. Guess what it does? It waves away worry. And exactly. guess what else it does? She could be at the house and didn't tell me. I could be at the house and didn't tell her. And they started calling my name. Mm -hmm. They don't answer. Guess what happens? Automatically, I get frustrated because it looks like they're not responding to me. Now I go outside, looking for look outside the room where I'm at, looking for her in frustration and anger because she's not answering me. Mm -hmm. In reality, she's gone and she left and didn't say anything to me. Mm -hmm. Well, if there's no practice in that, here's what husbands and wives have to be careful too. All of a sudden, you go out leaving frustrated because they didn't tell you they were gone. But that hasn't been your practice. Now you you're you're angry and frustrated illegitimately.
because that, that's not something that you gave or, or was given to each other. But now the time that you want something, now you're frustrated because you didn't have that, res you didn't have that respect. Mm -hmm. If you do that, you don't have to worry about that. Everything will be fine, yeah. and you can push away wearing Yes, yeah, yeah. so much you were saying. I, what I was going to say, we can expect that from one another. Absolutely. You know, he's not going to leave the house no. without letting me know. No. I'm not going to leave the house without letting him know. Not that we have to be on a short leash nope. because we're not. Mm -mm. But it's just a simple common courtesy of it. As Absolutely. well as if I'm gone and going to be gone longer than what I expected or longer than what you expected. Mm. And I, out of common courtesy, going to call and say, Absolutely. look, I am shopping or whatever and it has taken... Well, <laughs> well when she goes shopping, I, I don't even need no phone call. I, I know it's going to take three days. I, I understand that. So I just want her to be safe. I want to be careful and stuff. But I do call. Yeah, she say, does you call. Know, it's going to take a little longer and, because X, Y, Z. And I'm not surprised. I don't get... And she... <laughs> and she's going shopping, and she's going, and, and she like say she leave at nine o'clock, and it's one o'clock, and stuff, and it's one o'clock. You know, my wife is the oh only one. Oh my look, god! Look what? Huh? No. What? If she okay, if she leave, and if it's, she leave at nine, and it's quarter one, and stuff. I don't. I'm not worried because I know what she's doing. She's shops. She, she look for me. no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Huh? They don't take that long to shop. But I know. I know, I know. See my grocery shopping? Yeah, any kind of shopping, any kind of shopping. It don't take other people, but I'm, I'm, I'm sure most wives, I'm sure most husbands will, will attest that um, when, when the wives go shopping, it does take them, it does take them quite, quite a bit of long time. Not grocery shopping. Huh? No, because I already got my list wrote out. So it don't take a long time grocery shopping? No. Ooh. No. Okay. Now for shoes. Yeah. Something like that, you know. But baby, I, listen. I've I've been in I've been in the uh, I, I've been in, the, in, in in shop. I go when I go. She don't like me to go though. No. Cause when I go, I'm I'm in a rushing her no. and stuff. No. Because I'm ready, ready to go. And then get home and forgot some of your favorite stuff. And you thinking, well, why didn't you get it? Because you was rushing me out no, the store. No, 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 no. But then I don't. That's why I don't go. I, I'd rather be just go and go and look and through. I so look through, look through the. She looked through the aisles about four I, or five I times so and stuff. It. You know. So, I do. Look, I'm going to say this one more thing. I'm going to let go. I'll be out there, uh, like when I do go, I'll be sitting in the car, and I'll be seeing these people like come in. Like we go out shopping on, let's say we go Monday. I see people Stop. who came Stop. in. <laughs> Stop. I see. Stop. Like, no. Like, no. Look, look, no. Look, come on. Look. <laughs> look. We'll be in the store about one, right? And I see my wife will go in there. My wife will go in at one. And I see people coming about one thirty. And stuff about you know about two two o'clock and they come out right before before she do and all of a sudden my wife come out and she got she got her stuff and everything and I asked I said how in the world the uh, the people go in half an hour hour after you and they come I'm leaving I'm leaving <laughs> uh, but look she's a good shopper she gets deals and that's what that's what counts she gets yes, deals and she gets what's good yes. for uh, for us for us as a family it's just us two right now our kids are on their own. And stuff, but she she does a good job. I'm just teasing her. I mean, I'm not. It's the truth about the time, but uh, but she does she does an ap, ex, absolute excellent job. And stuff, so we we thank God. Okay, hon. All right. You anything want to say about my shopping? Now? Am I? I'm good there, right? Are you oh good? no. When like, we go to the electronic store, you mean like computers and and twenty and, minutes and I. Oh my lord, no indeed. When I picked out a tablet, tell the truth. Now I was in there about what 20, 20 minutes. Hmm. And I was almost out there. No, you wasn't. Huh? Mm-mm. Yes, sir. All right, honey, let's go on then. Okay. Tonight we're starting with consideration is the key to moving forward from a conflict. Amen. That topic in itself says a lot. Absolutely. Because you can't move forward from a conflict when there's no consideration. You, 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 I think one of the problems this pastor is that people like to um, like to try to... Uh, people, what's that? I always liked you, but now I love you, and you are, and your cause is good to hear from you. Keep up the good work. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Love you. Thank you for the encouragement. Yes. I think, Pastor Flowers, there are some people who can get in conflicts, mm -hmm. then get in, especially in relationships, and they try to move on, but I consider how, how's that person going to come You've with You've got me? to have consideration. Absolutely. I, I've got to think, if we have a problem, if we have an argument and stuff, and sometimes I don't think any of us take enough time to realize I want to leave this argument. I want to solve this problem. I want to get away from this. I want to get away from whatever's causing us to stay here mm -hmm. and stuff. And and sometimes that that operation only in, in, in only involves us. 
how can I make myself feel better about moving away from this without sometimes considering that you're not the only one, if you're going to stay in this relationship, you're not the only one that has to live there. That person that you had the conflict with, that, that your, uh, your spouse and stuff, has to live there with you too. So I have to consider, okay, how do I take responsibility in moving myself out of this with the person I had a conflict with? So when we arrive at that place, or when I arrive, think I've arrived at that place, that my spouse is with me too. Both of us have arrived. And now I'm where we're at. And this is the key thing. Your problem may not be over. No. But you at least move away from the place where it becomes a hard conflict where you can't communicate. But the problem may not be over. You still may have the problem. But again, you may move away from the place where you're not battling anymore. That you now can form a plan that we can deal with this issue, deal with this problem, deal with this challenge, deal with whatever wrong is being done and stuff, and come to a place of solution, and both of us can live there. Mm -hmm. and stuff. But that takes consideration. Absolutely. Absolutely. That takes not just considering your part. Absolutely. Also having enough empathy to try to understand. Um, now I, I think sometimes in marriages, it, it falls short when one tries to understand why you have this point of thinking. Absolutely. Why did you feel that this was the right thing to do? Not as if you're interrogating them, mm -hmm. but just to try to understand where they were when they made that decision, mm -hmm. where they were when they felt the thing that they was feeling. Just, you know, Absolutely. to try to consider it. You, you know, you, you, said a, you said a key word, I think, sometimes, and I think that's where many of us um, in, 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 you know, in, on the path of, of dealing with conflicts and situations is, is that we don't like to be asked a lot of questions. No. Although the problem, and, and this is the thing, sometimes the problem far extends any questions that can be asked. That means you can ask as many questions, and sometimes you don't get to the place you need to get to until you start dealing with those questions exactly. one by one. You start being exactly. honest about what put you to that place to do whatever you do that you're being asked about. When we can do that and, and, and uh, you know do that honestly and not get frustrated, mm -hmm. we can quickly get, and I think frustration slows a lot of things up. Mm -hmm. If we stop getting frustrated, I think we can get to a place of solution yeah. and healing much faster yeah. than if we take time to get frustrated. Well, well, once we, we get frustrated, whether we want to believe it or not, we have shut down. Absolutely. Absolutely. We have shut down, you know. Absolutely. And you shut the other person down for wanting to ask yeah, anything exactly. else. Yeah, exactly. If you feel like my if you feel like my questions of care and concern, you feel like my questions of care and concern, not just, and this is another thing, mm -hmm. huh, not just care and concern about why you did that, but care and concern of what it did to me. If that's not if that's not something that concerns you, <laughs> I'm going to ask nothing else. Because it's not just about what you did, it's about what you did to me. Mm -hmm. And that, that needs to be taken into consideration because you did it. Mm -hmm. So if you don't get frustrated and you just deal with it, you answer the questions that's needed, the conversation can change then. Yeah. Now, that's not on one part. It's on both parts. Mm -hmm. That means the person who's asking questions need to be able to measure when enough information is given for them to go on as well, too. Mm -hmm. Not to just keep asking questions until you think there's something else because you believe or feel there's something else that need to answer you for. That's there's right. a place that you have to get to the place saying, this, place, this person is being honest enough for me to me for me to end this thing. And not to keep interrogating. That's when it becomes an interrogation. Mm -hmm. Because now we believe that this person is not being completely honest with mm -hmm. me. Well, if you ask enough questions to come to a conclusion that this person is taking responsibility for the behavior, they're not going to continue, continue to practice it. You're on their mind and on their heart mm -hmm. to change whatever they need to change so both of you can live happy in your relationship. Then the interrogation or the questions need to stop. You exactly. keep asking questions. And don't let nobody else come in. Don't let nobody else Baby, honey, do mm -hmm. you, did you, don't you let nobody else break. Once you've closed that door, don't you let anybody else bring undiscovered mm -hmm. information into your into your relationship and you start asking questions off of what somebody else has said. Yeah. Add-ons are not good. Amen. You know, when You're you right. come to the table and you have an issue that you have, deal with that particular issue. Then if there's an add-on and there's room for to be able to deal come with on, that, yes. then deal with it. But piling on and piling on and piling on, you're not going to get anything no. resolved. No. No, because the, the person, the other person that you're talking to, will always think, "Is this, is this ever gonna be over?" Is it and they'll ever always gonna be on the edge, waiting yep. for the next thing to come around. All right, hon. Okay. No matter what the situation or challenge to the relationship may be, if the motives of both are honest and considerate, they will both meet at a place of productive working. Mm -hmm. They may not agree, but they will never bring harm to the other because their loving, because their loving consideration always brings discipline to not only their words, but their thoughts as well. They will argue, they will even argue with kindness and not the selfish motives to win. Absolutely. You know, Pastor Flowers, mm -hmm. uh, we, we- There we, is a way to argue yeah. with kindness. Oh, yes. And we, in consideration of what absolutely. you're saying and absolutely. how the, how you're making the other person feel. Absolutely. And consideration thinking, if I stab him with my words, mm -hmm. after this argument is said and done, I want him to love me. Mm -hmm. How's he going to love me if, if, if every time I talk to him, my uh, tongue and my words are like knives? So, so true. You know? So true. 
So true. You know, we're going to have these things where we don't always agree. Exactly. You're going um, to disagree. Again, excuse me, consideration doesn't mean we agree. Mm -mm. It just means that we don't disqualify the other person's opinions or thoughts just because we don't agree. Exactly. We take that and we find out how can we work through with this. How's, how how much bearing of truth does this have on what we do? When we do that, y'all, and we have that kind of consideration, we'll never say anything that will hurt the other person. We will never exactly. bring harm. Disagreement doesn't mean that that person is your enemy, so you don't have to treat them like an enemy. You know, in a, in a court case and stuff, uh, you know, I've seen this on court shows on television, how sometimes uh, uh, the lawyer will, 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 will be interviewing or, or cross-examining a, a witness, mm -hmm. and the witness um, doesn't seem to want to answer or comply. Mm -hmm. So they get permission from the judge to treat them like a hostile, mm -hmm. like a hostile witness. And then they start to be more aggressive towards, they now they get more permission to be more aggressive towards the person that's on the stand. Yeah. We don't have to do that one another. Mm -mm. We should never treat each other like well, like the other is a hostile witness. Like we have to be more aggressive in order to get the answers mm -hmm. or the truth that we think that that person is hiding from us. But we should always treat the other person like we're considering that we have we need, like you were saying, like we're going, we want to work with this person yeah. after all this is over. Yeah, like we want from this done. person what we want. Yes. All right, honey. Okay, this is frozen. It's frozen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, if you can read that passage, we can go the from there. The passage says here in James three seventeen, and the Amplified says, "But the wisdom from above is first of all pure." undefiled then it is peace loving courteous considerate gentle it is <laughs> okay amen amen but again there it is jumping again uh, all it does it, it talks about um in james three uh was two and seven three drop it down a little bit for us huh? amen god is so good he's worthy of all. just give us just a, just a second The bottom line is this, y'all. No matter how smart we may uh, assume or claim ourselves to be, if we're not walking in a God kind of wisdom, it's easy to be entreated as kind, as gentle, and stuff, and, 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 and stuff. It doesn't hold on to a whole lot of things, but it looks to, for a place, or looks for an avenue of solution and stuff. If we don't have that kind of stuff in our wisdom, or if it can't be applicable to the directions and mode or the way of doing things that God has, it's not real true wisdom. It's no, not it's wisdom not. from God. Because wisdom from God never thinks itself better, never makes us think ourselves better than another person. Guess what it doesn't do? It doesn't hold on to cause arguments. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make excuses for wrongdoing, wrong actions and activities. But what the wisdom of God does is shoots for a solution. Find out how can we get to a place that both of us can be effective in this? How can we work effective in this? How can you and I come out beneficial in this? How can we do what's necessary so we don't be hanging on the edge of this conflict or the edge of this problem or the edge of this thing that we, and where we need a solution in? How can we get to that place? And that what, that's what the wisdom of God does. The wisdom of God doesn't make victims out of the out of, out of person that it's talking to or relating to. But what the wisdom of God is, find, find, find a common ground that's workable for both of us so we can get to a place of not just peace, but a place of healing and solution and solving things. Amen? Did you get it fixed now? Yeah. Amen. Well, praise God. God's good. God's good. Amen. Y'all give us just a second here because we got some topics and stuff we want to get to right quickly. Those are the topics. Okay, so you're, you're past it now. Um, I'm past the scripture. I'm okay. down to the topics. Okay, well, we're okay. to get to that, baby. Okay, the first topic says, uh, we must take time to discern the season and the need for the words that we're about to speak to each other. Now, when we're, when we're, in, mm -hmm. and when we're talking about consideration, the kind of con that kind of consideration uh, that builds, the kind of consideration that encourages and stuff, when you're coming into a place of conflict and there's a problem. That was James 3 and 17 that we yes, that we from, in the Amplified Version. Um, when we come to a place of consideration and stuff, and you have something you need to solve with, and that's on both ends, not just the person that may be doing something wrong, but the person that's receiving or the person that's answering questions based trying to get answers for some, why something was done wrong, mm -hmm. that you need to m measure this, the, the readiness of the words. Because be honest with you, there are some people who do things, and past survivors, they can be so embarrassed that no matter what question you ask them, it, may, it, it knocks them off balance. Mm -hmm. Not that you don't need answers, and not that answers should, shouldn't be given, but you need to uh, uh, figure out in, in the working of this thing, are they ready for the questions that I need to ask? Now, first of all, this question should always be ready. Why'd you do that? Why'd you do that? Actually, always, why, why'd, you, why, why'd you talk to me like that? Mm -hmm. You know, why'd you let that happen like that? Mm -hmm. And stuff. Now, they may not be ready or fully ready to take responsibility for how, why, why they did it. And maybe not be uh, ready to take full responsibility for what you want to give them to why not do it again. Mm -hmm. But at least they need to come to a place that understand that this kind of behavior is not acceptable for a relationship. Mm -hmm. Not just me. And that's, what, that's the key part, I think. I have a question. Just, now, I like what you just said about being able to tell your spouse that this kind of behavior is not acceptable if you want to be in a relationship. Stop. 
Yo. <laughs> you won't hug me, don't you? <laughs> um. Do you, do you, do you, don't you tell me. Baby, get it out. Do you want to hug me? Tell me the truth. I'll hug you out. Oh. <laughs> um, we're, we're. I won't hug how you. How can. Good, how I'm sorry. You, okay. Uh, how can you, when you're dealing with a person who wants to be right, mm -hmm. they got to be right, how can you tell them, say, look, this type of behavior that you're uh, doing right now is not acceptable. I don't want this type of behavior, and they got to be right. So of course they're going to defend. They're going to um, defend their actions. How are you going to tell them that their actions are wrong and try to get through them when they feel like you know everything they do is right anyway, and they're going to defend their actions? Well, you have to bring that person to a, a, a calm understanding by you being calm and say, "Listen, I'm not telling you what you don't have a right to do." So what you're saying, Proverbs. Uh, uh, where it says a soft answer turn yeah, away wrath. Okay. You know, I'm not gonna get. I'm not gonna get it. I'm not gonna get as excited with with my questioning as you are with your defense. Okay. But I, what I do need you to understand. How you doing, uh, Mary? Good to see you. What I do need you to understand is, is this. I'm not telling you what you don't have a right to do, but I do need to bring you question. Do, will you take your rights over the health of our relationship? Mm -hmm. Because. It's not just what you're doing to me, but it's what you're doing to our relationship. It's a position you're putting me in in our relationship. But I need you to answer that. I need you to find out what will you get, what will you, what will you take over our relationship? And and I'm telling you that you, and I'm bringing this to your thought. What you're doing is offending me in the relationship. Not just me as your, me as your, as your spouse. Not just me as your husband. Not just me as your wife. But you're offending me in the relationship, which means this: if we don't get a divorce, I'll always be your husband and wife. Mm -hmm. But I can't always be your spouse if you keep offending me. I, I will always be your wife. But and I and I don't mean just to play on words. When you when you when you qualify and are considerate and allow me to be the kind of spouse that's that's your covering or your help me and stuff. When you do that, there's a whole lot of other benefits that go along with that. But if we just exist in the home, there's a very very narrow amount of benefits that can come from that. And if you keep doing behavior like this, you push your spouse away, and all you got is someone existing in your home, in home that you made a covenant with. So that's the question you need to pose. You may feel you're right in doing something. You may feel you don't need to answer. But the question you need to ask yourself and all your thoughts when you're by yourself, defending the reason why you did that and why you don't think you need to be asked about to it is this. Would you trade will you continue to trade it in defending your behavior over what is ob what obviously seems to be offense to your spouse? Will you trade it in over the happiness of your family and stuff? And what are you really getting out of it by practicing the same behavior, mm -hmm. especially if it's offending your spouse? If something yeah. you said or do, and nothing really comes to mind, but it's something that you say or do, the way you do things, the way you respond. There are just some things, I, I guess, there are just some ways mm -hmm. and actions that people can get set in that are stubborn. Mm -hmm. And they won't change the way they do yeah. things. Whether it's howling money, um, yeah. whether it's the way where they allow people to, to come, into the, uh, uh, come into the space without consideration of both or consideration of who they are and stuff. And they keep practicing these things, same things over and over again. And one says, look, we don't want to keep doing this. And the other says, well, I can't. What, what can I do about it? Well, there are some things you can do about it. But you got to come together and find out what's beneficial for both. Not just do things because you feel you have to do it because your spouse is getting on your nerves. Mm -hmm. But you have to see whether this is wrong as that, too. What wrong about, what about the spouse that feel like they have to do it or else it's going to start an argument? Uh, let, let's let, say here's a spouse that... Have, you're married to someone who has to argue their point. If they bring up their point and all this thing you have to do is act hesitant to agree with them mm -hmm. or just if you say, well, I don't know about that. Here's, here's a big, 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 big argument coming up simply because you were hesitant to agree with them or you absolutely came out and said, I don't agree with that. Mm -hmm. How do you come to a common ground and walk in unity with someone who argue their point. The only thing you have to do is just act like you don't agree with them. You, you know what, they got to be right. You know, what, you know what kind of makes me think sometimes, Pastor Flowers? Mm -hmm. There are Christians that have come to church, and if you tell them, look, you got a, you got a position and stuff, and uh, or you, you got this and that going on, and if you're not going to do that position, let us know. Mm -hmm. And they will cry, ain't nobody going to be controlling me. Mm -hmm. Ain't nobody going to be controlling me and stuff. How are you going to tell me uh, what, I, what I need to do? I'm growing but when they come home, they want that spouse to be unconditionally answerable to them while they've been to nothing. Yeah. So on, on that court that you That's may say, why, why are you going to that? Is you can't be, you can't have an opinion about things that you that 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 finds commitment and humility in your church, 
and then go directly opposite of that in your home. Mm-hmm. If you can't be, if you feel that you're you 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 being grown, and you having some sort of wisdom, um, this disqualifies anybody from exercising authority of covering over your life in the church, such as your leader and stuff. Why do you think God says that that's that's okay, but He's against you doing that in your home? Mr. Possible, what do you what do you mean? If nobody can if nobody can expect anything of commitment from you in your in your spiritual life, why do you think you can demand that in your relationship life? Mm-hmm. Because both of them are relationships, mm-hmm. both of them are spiritual, both of them have everything to do with what you get from God. If you don't treat your spouse right, your prayers not gonna be answered. If you don't cover her right, if you don't if you don't treat her according to knowledge, not get your prayers answered. If you disrespect your covering and stuff, you act like you know that, that you have no husband, you have nobody you can trust. You, you, your prayers are gonna be hindered. Why? Because they said God, God talked about the Malachi. He talked about the Ephesians. He talked about how these things uh, get in the way of him being able to work with a relationship that's supposed to be a covenant. Because we're arguing about. It. I'm, I'm just paraphrasing mm-hmm. and stuff. So I'm I'm saying to you, whatever your position or disposition is when it comes to your spouse, it should be always the same that you feel that it is in your church. Mm-hmm. You know we, we need to be answerable to our leadership. We need to be answerable to one another. Ephesians says it. Ephesians talks about being uh, uh, being answerable one to another. Yeah. It talks about relationship with the church. It drops right down to mm-hmm. talk about uh, being answerable to another. It talks right back and said, well, I, I'm not just talking about the church. I'm, I'm talking about uh, marriages as well. Mm-hmm. So we need to be answerable. You can't be stubborn with your spouse and stuff and expect them to see this as a sensitive caring mm-hmm. side. You know? And spouses, you can't just attack your, your, your spouse and stuff because you want answers. You have to be able to do this, Pastor. And I was talking about earlier. She brought it up by Proverbs. Use that soft answer. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying soft answers will all, but always bring someone who, who's bent to be stubborn. But I'm saying at least to get you out of the way, so how God, uh, wherever where God has to deal with them, yes. he'll, be able to, he'll be able to deal with them. Mm-hmm. But you have to let God be able to deal with them, so God can finish the task that He starts mm-hmm. with you out with you out of the way. Mm-hmm. What all I'm, what I would say in, in, in inclusion with that with that uh, question is is this, Pastor Flowers, if your spouse doesn't mean enough to you to put down your pride, your aggravation, yes. and your anger yes. to answer what their heart is crying yes. for. You, 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 you are uh, um, enemy to your own marriage. Mm-hmm. You're enemy to your own relationship. Now, sometimes can I? Sometimes is it can can it be at times past the bars where mm-hmm. spouses ask questions that have nothing to do with any mm-hmm. kind of solution? They just ask questions mm-hmm. just to exercise some authority. Yes, mm-hmm. yes, but you got to know the difference. Yeah. Both have to know the difference. Both have to know when they're going overboard and when enough is enough. And what about the nitpicky spouse? The one that just... That everything can be going good, come home, have dinner, whatever, go to church, everything going good, and it's going too good. Mm. And the nitpicky spouse will find something to nitpick about, even if they have to make up something. You know what that is, and in, in all honesty, and, and, and I guess as serious as we can be, not that we want serious in the beginning, but you have to look a little bit deeper to find out what is, what makes you feel like that you can't enjoy the happiness of what's going on. Yeah, that yeah. you got to find something that's wrong. And then there's yeah. some, there are just some spouses that are in this in this situation. Not all of them mean to be nitpicky. Not all of them, but sometimes that's their fear, that's their dysfunction that's coming out. Some that many may have grown up and stuff, and in life seemed like the rug was always pulled out from under their feet. When it looked like everything was going fine, something always came up. Some had a problem with some something and stuff, and never come through with it. it. Looked like they were just about to do it and stuff, and they never followed through with what they said. And this begins to build a law in them, and they begin to and they, and they be, and they, some of even tell themselves, "Well, you know what? I ain't depend on nobody." You find some of these angry people. You find them even on Facebook and say, "You know what? I ain't I ain't listen. I'm working for my own happiness." I am not depend. I don't need no man. I don't need no woman. I don't need. I don't need none of them. I'm gonna be happy by myself. But they're always looking for one. That stuff. Mm-hmm. That's their defense. That's the dysfunction in them. Where so many rejections, so many disappointments have happened mm-hmm. that they just re- they just resign to the fact of I'm not gonna look for happiness. If it comes, I'll take it as it is. But I'm not gonna look for nothing beyond that. Mm-hmm. And stuff. And sometimes what you gotta look at sometimes is some of these spouses who look like they're nitpicky is find out what is underneath that rug. So yeah. Let's talk about this. Let's not just say... Find out what's the root of right, the nitpicking. Right. Why do you always find something to not be happy about? Right. You know? Right. You know, you're always looking for something to fail, something to go wrong and stuff. You go to the mailbox and still 
decreeing a blessing because we have prayers. You mm -hmm. pray that prayer over our finance and find the money, money coming in the mail, mm -hmm. so and so on, bills paid off and all that stuff. And instead of taking that confession to everywhere you go, you go in the mailbox more nervous about the bills that's going to yeah. come in than God's solution that you confess yes. that whatever's in the mailbox, God will take care of. And sometimes you have these people whose life has always had incidents after incidents of rejection, brokenness, disappointments. And just and in, they took that in the marriage. And took that in the marriage. Mm -hmm. And now you got a person who's in the marriage who's always looking for you to do something wrong, mm -hmm. something for you to say something wrong. You call them, you have even some, and you remember you used to, at church, you say, and we used to say, no, stop that. Y'all come out, I want to talk to you. Oh, what did I do yeah, wrong? what you is know? it now? And, and it's nothing to do, you did wrong. Mm -hmm. How you know, it's just, I just want to talk to you. And there are some spouses that are like that. But you have to be able to be patient enough and willing enough to say, let's talk about what's underneath that rug. Because it should be every time we have a discussion or every time happiness uh, displays itself, you, you you find yourself in moments where you just drop your head, close your eyes, and can't start warfaring. It. Yes, can't even enjoy it. You warfare as, least, as if something bad is about to happen next. All right, hon. Okay, the next one is don't take forgiveness for granted in regards to how we may offend each other. Amen. Is this a question on here, hon? Let me see here. Yes, yes, we do. Hey, Matt, those, but you're right, absolutely right. Could you read that one more time, huh? Don't take forgiveness for granted in regards to how we may offend each other. Absolutely. You know, sometimes a pass of flowers, and, and this question goes right to this. Sometimes we say things, whether out of frustration or just, just saying it, knowing they're going to forgive me. Yeah. Or believe. Well, they got to forgive yeah. me. They're a Christian. They yeah. got to forgive me, so, you know, they yeah. can't hold it against me forever. Mm. Absolutely. I mean, you intention. There are sometimes you find people who will intentionally do things, and know when I do this here, I'm going to hurt my spouse. Mm -hmm. But he or she will forgive me because they are saved, and they, the Bible says that they have to forgive. Absolutely. You know, and so they take that for granted. Well, here's a problem they run into, Pastor Class. We talked about this on one of our very first, very first programs. Here's a problem that comes: you offend your spouse, and you offend your offend your spouse. And that offense becomes aggressive in their mm -hmm. heart. They know, too, that they have to forgive you. They know this is part of their salvation. Mm -hmm. This is part of God's covenant with them. They have to forgive you. But sometimes what happens is, is they forgive you here and stuff and can't let you go here. They remeasured you. They, they, yes. They or, redefined or the, the relationship. Or the mindset is so broken yeah. or offended by what was done yeah. that they forgive you here or they forgive you here in your mouth. But they can't forgive you here or here. And stuff, they go on as if everything is fine until a moment comes. When the fuse is lit and that ticking time bomb, mm -hmm. and what you thought was forgiven and let go, yeah. comes explosively yeah. out and does more damage to the relationship yeah. than, than the offense that you did if you had just held well, it. Well, isn't that where the relationship has been redefined? Uh, oh, I yes. Guess the incident has happened, the offense has happened, and even though you have you know, verbalized that you forgive them and that you know, you're know you going to try to move over, move on, but the relationship, unless something is done, has changed almost forever. Well, the, the, now, I understand what you're saying, and you're absolutely right, but you, that defined part is now they look at that person. You said that earlier. Different. Now they look at the person differently. They know they're still married, or they know that they, the, the, uh, the direction of relationship is still going on. This, uh, going on. They know that, uh, you know, unless they, you know, if they if they have purpose to get married, they still in the back of their mind, or at least an activity purpose to still get married. But how they go into that marriage and how they interact with one another in preparation for the marriage has now changed. Because what this person has done and stuff, they understand people make mistakes, but you can't just you can't just wash away the understanding that people make mistakes or even saying I'm forgive you when they haven't taken responsibility yeah. and no real no real mm -hmm. no real talk has happened mm -hmm. to find out why that happened and what we're gonna do to make sure it doesn't happen again. And so up in here they're thinking, man, I I didn't know that person would say that. I didn't know that person would do that. Mm -hmm. I didn't know they would act like that towards mm -hmm. me. And stuff in this mind is going on, but you're trying to get the heart to catch up to what your mouth is saying, mm -hmm. and it's having so much press, pressure and stress on you that not, no matter how hard you try, your vision, your, your your mental and emotional vision looks at them differently mm -hmm. because you did not expect them to do that. You yeah. didn't expect them to say that. And some may say, "Well, it wasn't that big a deal. It wasn't that big a deal to you because you don't feel the pain, yeah. or you don't feel the, the disappointment, it, right? Mm -hmm. You don't feel the disappointment." That came from you doing it to another person. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I think we have to move that out of the way. What doesn't seem like a big deal to you may not be a big deal because you did it and you realized that you shouldn't have did it. Mm -hmm. And now you want to get it over with. And the longer you think about how big a deal it is, the more guilty or convicted you feel. So you want to hurry up and get it out of the way, even pronouncing that it wasn't that big a deal. But you're not the one. It's like somebody being um, being ran over on a car with a, with a, with a Volkswagen. 
and stuff and uh, they, they, their leg gets messed up and they can't walk the same, but they can walk. And somebody looks at them and says, well, it was just a, a, a Volkswagen, mm -hmm. but you're still left with a limp. Exactly. You still left, nobody expects to or desires to be ran over by a car. So you're still left with a limp. Sometimes y'all, no matter how small you may think it's being said to the spouse, if they're left with an emotional limp, yeah. you could have used a sledgehammer yeah. and got the same results. It hurts. It leaves injuries and stuff. And the quicker we get at it, instead of making excuses or trying to minimize it, to we'll easier we can get drama. past it. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, we can get past it. We can get past it, take responsibility. Sometimes the, your wife may seem more dramatic because it hits her like that mm -hmm. and stuff. So we can't discount it because it doesn't hit her like that. You know, it's like somebody, you, you slap somebody to get a bruise. Mm -hmm. I can't believe you got a bruise. No, I, I slapped you with an open hand, but it was their skin. It was their, that's how their body reacted. Y your emotions or your feelings or your mindset may not react the same way uh, as you saying it, as they being it said to them, and that's the key key thing. You are saying it; they're being said too. Mm -hmm. So they're receiving what you're giving and stuff, and you can't tell them how deep how deep they have to take it when you had no measure on how you said it. So I, I think Pastor Flowers in this consideration is that yes, yeah, know the season, know what you're saying, know what's going to do what you're saying, and so and when 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 you say it, don't just assume that I can say it. And my spouse is saved. We're both saved. We both love God. We both love Jesus she'll and stuff. Get over it. And she'll get, get over it. it. It's not that easy. Mm -mm. And, and also put in consideration who's saying it. Yeah. What do you mean to the person that you're? What is your relationship with the person that you're saying it to? Here you are. You've opened yourself up to someone, and you're saying this is my better half. Absolutely. I have, you know, opened myself completely up to them. Um, I'm, I'm vulnerable to them. I trust them with everything. I love them with everything. They love me with everything. You know, I am so committed to them. They are so committed to me. And then that offense comes like Absolutely. that. It's Absolutely. going to take more than words to bring Absolutely. healing. Most because definitely. in that particular area, it's going to take actions and words to bring about the healing that's needed so that you can come back together and recoup. I mean, you know, you ever hear sometimes they say talk is cheap. Talk can be cheap sometimes. Especially when it's not followed up with actions. You know, if you're going to love me, you're going to love me in word and deed. I don't Most care definitely. how much you tell me you love me. you got to show Most me definitely. you love me. Most if you're definitely. telling me you loving me, that you love me, and you snapping at me like I'm Rover or somebody, or you snapping Rex. at Rex, okay, like I'm Rex or somebody. Well, well, no, Lacey, the dog named Lacey. <laughs> you snapping at me like I'm Lacey or somebody, that's not proving to me that you Amen. love me. That's proving that there is a mixed-up thing going on there. There is something that we need to sit down and talk about because what's on the inside of you is going to come out. Absolutely. And you're going to respond to me. You're going to react to me in the way, that, oh, baby, you know I love you. I don't know that because your actions is telling me that there's something else going on here. That's fine. And so that we need to sit down and we need to talk about these humps that's up underneath the rug and figure out how we're going to sweep these humps out Amen. so we can go on. Because right now what I'm doing is I'm closing myself up. I'm cocooning my emotions to protect me from you. And if I'm married to you, then I don't need to protect me from you. I don't need to protect my own emotions because you're supposed to be the steward of my emotions. Absolutely. You're supposed to be protecting me in that area. You're supposed to make sure I'm strong and not hurt and not wounded and me doing you the same way. Absolutely. But if you're snapping at me like I'm lacy, then there is a problem. Well, uh, or, or I can be Rex then. Okay, okay. Rex. You can be King. Oh, you can. Yeah, Jump okay. Shepherd. Okay. <laughs> All right, <laughs> Listen to this. Um, we got about five more minutes left in the broadcast. So here's what we want to do. We want to dedicate this time. Um, we're going to just talk a little bit, <laughs> say some things, but we want to dedicate this time to if you have any questions. Um, we will we will uh, uh, stir down and find out. Uh, amen. Uh, uh, find out if you have any questions, and we will we will get right right to those questions quickly um, before we get ready get ready to sign off. But let, let me see this. We're going to continue this mm -hmm. on the next broadcast because I think it's important for us to talk about solutions. And this is a, a another thing. It goes lends to those who are single and thinking about going into, into marriages, um, going into marriage. Um, it, it's arguing it can can have its oh place. Oh my God! But if that's all you do, mm. if all you do is argue a point, and nobody ever comes to a place of solution. Nobody ever solves anything. Nobody ever realizes we're being silly. And people That's don't not, like to be around you. That, yes. And you start thinking, well, how come no one really want to be around you? Like Every argue. time you get around argue, you, argue. there's an argument you're having with your spouse. Absolutely. Or argue. I'm, I'm just. I'm talking about singles too. At this point, if all you do is argue, if you argue and, and making decisions, 
if there's a big argument in planning the wedding, a big argument mm -hmm. in planning where you're going to live, a big argument about the honeymoon, yeah. everything is an argument. You don't, need, argument. you don't need to get married. You no. need to get delivered. You yeah. need to do something about this argument that would happen. This will destroy it. Um, something just jumped up where it was finishing. I don't know what was going on, but anyway. But bottom line is, y'all, we have to be more considerate and thoughtful in our marriages and in our relationships. Mm -hmm. When we're more thoughtful, y'all, we won't sometimes look like we're the only ones that have an opinion or thought mm -hmm. or, or problem in the marriage or that we're dealing with problems by ourselves. Mm -hmm. We'll know that the person that is with us and understand the person who's with us deserves the consideration of their opinions, their thoughts, and their feelings. And so when we do that, we can work to solutions much quicker. Mm -hmm. and we can solve problems much easier and much faster and stuff. And all, all it takes is just some consideration. Consideration. Just a little little bit of consideration. Taking yourself, uh, taking a step back, and being able to look and see that person that you're in a relationship with. Absolutely. Let me say this too, as we get ready to go. Um, said it earlier, and then we'll be on on a, on the bottom of the bar after we after we close out on the comments uh, section uh, of this, and that is, um, if you do want to sow into um, into our ministry, want to sow into our you know into what we're doing here, you can do it through PayPal or go into pay, on PayPal, put in our phone number 302-260-2733. And then uh, you, you can donate, um, prompts. follow the prompts after that, and donate. Uh, after this, you will also see a link that uh, where all of our videos that we do here live will be on our YouTube channel mm -hmm. and stuff. So uh, you will see a link that you can write to it. Matter of fact, there's one on there yeah, yeah. now. Please go on and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We are trying to fight for uh, to get over 100 or more um, partners or subscribers, and we get more benefits come towards what we can do on YouTube. Uh, we want to. You can help us do that. Absolutely, we want to eventually, if we can get to get to a place where we can come uh, live on YouTube and and stuff, and that will get the program out further and get more people involved in engaging into the program. We believe and we thank God for Tom and Piper. We believe God uh, will use this to bless uh, a lot of relationships and a lot of homes and in care. And that's our, our endeavor. We don't. Pastor Flowers said something earlier on, on before we came on. We don't want this to just be something that we do. Yeah. We're not trying to build a fan club. Mm -hmm. This is not a fan club. This is no popular contest. We want this to be purpose. Purpose. Mm -hmm. We want we want we want homes and lives to be absolutely changed. We want to come in. We want those, people to be as happy as absolutely. they portray themselves. Absolutely. To be. When we come we on, want we them want to, to smile something. for real, and they want them to laugh without absolutely. waiting for the next shoe to drop. Absolutely. You know, it's not again. It's not time that we spend just to be spending time. We want to come on, and we want to we want it to be relevant. We want it to be real. We want it to touch you where you're at mm -hmm. to help you get to where you, God wants you to be at. To be. Again, this is not a popularity contest. We mm -hmm. enjoy seeing those, and we pray that everybody who has watched our broadcast, who has watched our videos, who's come on after we've gone off to look at our videos, have been blessed by what we yes. say and stuff. We see God. We don't just come on and just mm -hmm. show hands. Except when we're kidding with one another, that's that's from us. Mm -hmm. But we seek God for what we, you know, what's to be said. That's what's to what be we're reading by. over here. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, it's not. You know, that's what my past fathers don't know. That's something that God has given us to, so we can uh, share with you. So please keep us in your prayers. We want to take this to wherever God wants us to take us. But most importantly, we care about where your life at is at, what relationships, where your life at is with God, and we want to make sure that's, that's all that's been given in our hands to do to encourage every level of your relationship mm -hmm. to remove the dysfunctions that the enemy wants to take advantage of to cause not just this generation in which you're living in mm -hmm. to be functional in a relationship, but the ones that come after you. And stuff. So that's what we want, to, want God to just do what only God can do. Listen, we thank you for joining us. Uh, if this video has been a blessing to you, please share it on your page. Share it with other people. Um, uh, just, just share, 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 and stuff. And uh, and we believe God will be a blessing. Hey, Leona, how you doing? Amen. Said so we just thank God. Pastor, far as anything you want to say before we get just before we blessed, get just blessed. So glad that everyone joined in. I'm excited to see my sister join in on yes. tonight. Um, yes. Trudy, good to see you again daughter, Tony, and Talisha. We're just glad that everybody joined in. Every, every, every. Mary, joined. glad to see consistent yes. um, uh, uh, viewer. We thank God for you. Mm -hmm. We thank God for all those who've been consistently uh, joining us, and we thank God for you again. Uh, we give God praise. Leona, I hope everything is going well. I know it is. I believe it is. And we just thank God. And Pastor Flower's sister, we, I thank you for joining in and stuff. It's good to, good to see Andy. It's good to see family. My family joining mm -hmm. Family joining in and stuff. We thank God for you. So listen again, please share this. If you came, if you if you didn't hear the whole broadcast, go back and listen. Mm -hmm. it can, it's, it's no charge, not none whatsoever. Go back and you can listen for free. Get on a YouTube. It'll be on a on our um, on a Facebook page for a while. Then it'll go to a YouTube channel. And you can again, it'll be a link where you can go look at all our videos on YouTube. Also go on Amazon.com.
put in our name and you'll see our books yes. up there. Please be a, be a blessing. They'll be a blessing to you. I guarantee you, they'll be a blessing to you. One of the things that we want to encourage you about this month is because we're coming to a summer season. It seems like everybody seems to be doing a lot of things during the summer season. Is you want to certainly get that uh, get a uh, pastor flowers book on, on the prophetic book and the name again is pastor flowers the prophetic book. Oh, um, if you can reach over the me, I got it right over there. Okay. Give me give me one one second if you can. Amen. Lord, I, what a jewel blank. Yeah, I, I, you know, I, you, you know why I didn't, you know why I didn't call mine up? Because I do a blank too. Uh, <laughs> prophetic blank. ministry empowerment keys to a successful prophetic ministry. Uh, this is about uh, Pastor Flowers uh, and stuff. Uh, go to Amazon.com. Look for the big gold book and stuff. And uh, I, I guarantee you, uh, in in this season, we need to be proficient, not just in our relationships with each other, but we need to most important to be relationship, be uh, uh, prophetic in our relationship, but be proficient, effective. And excellent in our relationship with God. Amen. All right. Listen, God bless you. Um, there was a daughter again, Tony, up there. Uh, so, listen, God bless you. We're going to get ready. We're going to get ready to close this session. Had a good time. We yes. really enjoyed it. So, uh, also, you'll see on the link when our next broadcast is. Please, again, share this. Let someone know that time empowerment has been on. And if it's been a blessing to you, please share it with them as well. God bless you. And we'll talk to you again on our next broadcast.